Welcome back, my friends. So here we are. Um, we have another job. Like, I'm, you know, this economy is really rough. You have to have like more than one job to survive out there. But in this job in particular, we are going to be a nosy neighbor. We are part of the neighborhood crime watch and we have to help our person out by trying to decide whether or not these people need to be reported or they need to be scrapped. Okay, so that is our job. That's what we're going to do. Let's get into it. When she was a kid, Luna aspired to be a superhero. Not the ones in skin-tight suits that could fly, but the ones that identified connections where others didn't. She wanted X-ray vision to observe criminals when they tried to hide from the law, and supersonic hearing to listen in on mischievous talks, then a measure of heightened strength to restrain the guys bigger than her. This was all she craved when she was a child. As she became older, her ambitions took a more realistic approach which seemed in direct opposition to the surreal tone the news took. The facts became the new dystopian fiction. The world grew louder each year, apparently more violent or more visible than the year before. Her generation grew up looking to cull the increasingly violent trends that saw mass incarcerations, drug wars, and serial killers studying to gain notoriety. Luna took the analytical route in her quest for justice feeling more at home processing case files, evidence, and connecting dots. Her cousin, a sister almost, enrolled in the academy and became an officer of the law. Even extended family, no matter how far away, seemed to gravitate towards law enforcement, almost as if it were in their blood. A murderer becomes a serial killer with just two more kills, a coworker informed her over scones and coffee one morning. This one had three total that day. But that number hit double digits soon enough, accumulating corpses of officers, criminal lawyers, and several field investigators to a growing pile of victims. The news on TV, becoming more unreal as the years ticked on by, ran the Blue Blood Killer story 24-7. Luna knew about the local serial killer, more so than most thanks to all the overtime spent processing corroborative evidence for their many crimes. However, it still felt more like gossip and fabricated plot points. At least, until that phone call made something so artificial an actuality. The call came in the middle of the night, as unexpected as a bullet in the dark. Her cousin, the exemplar of a police officer, had been killed. It was just the tragically common traffic stop gone wrong, or armed robber with a weighted pistol. Maybe Luna could have mourned and pushed on, but it wasn't any run-of-the-mill incident that was so characteristic of headlines. No, it wasn't that because life had long turned into a phantasmagoric nightmare. Officer Sarah Youngman, revered by all that mattered, died at the hands of the Blue Blood Killer. Who he was, or who they were, remained an enigma despite their murder spree eroding through states, counties, and homes. But more than the long list of confirmed victims and possible connections Luna herself had registered and slept away, this monster killed Sarah. Somehow, that turned the boogeyman into a living, breathing threat. No longer was this tyrant a thing she filed at the end of the day. It wasn't an obsession of the media. He was here, and if not in the literal sense, then definitely in her mind. This realization gnawed at her for months after the real morning faded. Luna's acceptance stage barely registered before she fell swiftly to anger once again, and it never genuinely went away. Luna craved a name. She wanted to know who killed the sweetest woman in the world, despite so-called dirty cops walking free. Luna needed justice. What was it about her cousin that triggered this killer in the first place? Could it be that she stood for everything a cop should be? A perfect example of morality, protectiveness, mentality, and heart? Officer Youngman was everything demanded in the ones that protected them, and Luna wouldn't allow her memory to fade away as another statistic. Day in and day out, 
She spent the connections she'd built up through work and rowdy Christmas parties to see if there was something no one else saw. Cop friends that never steered her wrong came up empty-handed. Family members with careers linked closer to the real action knew little else than the papers. Even the old-timers that knew things few else did all but shrugged when she pressed them for clues. She needed leads first, but there were none. So, in a last-ditch effort, she resolved to chew her boss for leeway. Luna did all she could for any little morsel of information, regardless of the fallout. Being an investigations analyst for the district attorney's office had its perks, but it only teased her for all the good it did with building an idea of who this killer was. Her boss knew what she was after, but he followed the rules as strictly as Luna did. Being shut down by him just meant there was one less layer between a law-abiding citizen and vigilante justice. With each denied application for information outside her classification, Luna saw the justice system's holes appear and broaden. Sometimes the law hindered what mattered. The progress couldn't always continue behind red tape and protocol. Perhaps, in cases like these, rules were meant to be budged. Maybe she couldn't talk her way into databases and case folders. Maybe it wasn't so easy as to read reports on other victims, hoping a eureka moment hit her. If she were going to make any change, it had to start with her, with citizens willing to help. Yes, Luna respected the law, and she would uphold it as Sarah would have wanted, but she couldn't stand idly by any longer. One morning, she called in sick, made flyers, and pinned them around town. She started a neighborhood watch that day, and by the next day at work, Luna couldn't think of anything else. It started with one report, then two, then three and four, and more. Before she realized what was happening, her small network of retired cops and nosy neighbors had become a full-on crime watch program that spanned beyond the neighborhood, the suburbs, and into town. At times, the number of reports felt too much for one person. But for the hundreds of thousands of people less prepared for human horrors as Sarah was, Luna felt that a couple of sleepless nights was the least she could do. Luna had to get her answers somehow. And we can turn off jump scares, but I don't think there should be because Detective has it to where... I should get to my computer and get the night started. Yeah, so I don't think we have to worry about anything in detective mode. Okay, hold on, let me back out. Like the windows are already closed. Like, I was supposed to go to my computer. None of my windows were closed. I don't think that they're gonna come for me, but just in case. I mean, this is just detective mode, so that means like nothing scary should happen. I should just not be not be scared. I don't know. I don't know what this one's about. No, no. Okay, so the security cameras are missing because I shouldn't have to do anything. So we're gonna just get this all set up real quick. Now we don't need upgrades right now. So now we're going to pull the report out. Um, Jennifer Canali, female. This one woman from my neighborhood has been following me for a few weeks. 
At first I thought it was just my, just my imagination and that it was all coincidence. But she always, but she's always stopping when I'm there or walking her dog while I'm jogging. The day before I met her outside my school and asked her what she was up to. She told me that she wanted to pick up her son from school. I know about that. She only has one son and he's 13 years old. So he is too young for high school. I don't like the feeling that I'm always being watched by this lady wherever I go. Okay, well, let's go ahead and check for her for police records because, you know, Jennifer Connelly. Oh, okay. At 5.15 p.m., Mary at the 911 call center dispatched myself, Officer Howell, and my partner, Officer Bates, to Maria Heights, where we informed ahead of time of a fight in a bar near an apartment complex early where a suspect was spotted verbally lashing a white male. After arriving at the residence, we met with Mr. Connolly. He appeared coherent but badly beaten and claimed his wife, Mrs. Connolly, struck him several times with her fist, then threatened him with a steak knife. As I approached the suspect, she charged at me with a knife, hitting my vest just below my middle rib on the left side. Officer Bates was able to ap apprehend her several seconds later. She was uncooperative during detainment, screaming at myself and other officers that she was going to unalive herself and that we should shoot her dead. We handcuffed her and took her into police station under charges of two counts of attempted murder, including one of a police officer, domestic abuse, resisting arrest. It is the recommendation of this officer that she be admitted for 72 hour psych evaluation. Okay, so listen, why is she following this child around if she should be in prison? Like she should be in prison. All right, all right. Oh, this is an evidence. This isn't it. We're just going to hold this police report right there. Right there. So she's she's some bad, bad mamma jamma. Let's see if she... Let's go check on her little Facebook, you know? Let's check on it. Let's check on it. See what she has. See ha what she has going on. Oh, we have no results for her. So let's go ahead and check on... See. Oh, I think we had some information from her here. I approached. Um, I think he said, like, I thought he said on here. No, he just says that she's crazy. That's about it. So, I don't know. What do you think her age is? Let's go see here and see if we can get it. Okay, so we have no transactions. Let's go to age. We don't really know. We know that her hair color is brown she has blue eyes you know she's a female we don't know what her weight or height or her age is um i don't know man Okay, hold on, hold on. 31, 5, 9, 123 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay, okay, that's her identification. Look at her. Look at the culprit. Her alias is Blood Angel 123. Let's try, let's try her alias, though. Maybe she's under an alias for her shenanigans. Maybe she'll, like, be posting on here um, about what she's... Oh, girl. Okay. Okay. Oh, she lied. She lied about her weight. She said she's six foot tall, though. She lied about her height and her weight. And her age. <laughs> she lied about everything. 
Everything in here is a lie. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's go back and we'll read her stuff. This is her, like, pretend Facebook page. <laughs> I don't know. What, what should we call this? This is her um, social media page. I am surrounded by liars and cheats who have made it their goal to humiliate me and take my husband from me. They want me to drive. They want to drive me mad and uh, to unalive myself, but I won't let them. Let's do that one. The circle is complete. That little b i t c h won't. She won't give up. Everybody supports her and wants to help her take my beloved husband away from me. She's got her claws in him. I have to think of something right away. Oh my god. Dude, there's only one solution left. The final solution. I figured out a way to destroy it. I'm just waiting for the right moment. We leave tomorrow night. Time to take to make some dinner soon. Dude, I think she's planning on like like hurting this poor girl. All right, so I I I think this is an evidence. I don't know how. Like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Like, I think that's an evidence for sure. Oh, no, no, no. Can we get that out? Throw that out. That's not evidence. Hold on. It's the part where she talks about her. No, no, no. That's it, right there. Because she's talking about her. And then... And then go here, but I do want to put her name in here. Yeah, just to see. I mean, I didn't get any other names, so. And then the root kit is, I think, something for for that. So I think this is actually I think this is pretty good. Yeah, I think this is good. Let's let's fax this in. Oh. Wait, okay, wait, which ways? I think that's the shredder. Okay, so that's what that okay. That's how you do it. Okay. Margaret Ridley. All right. We get some more, we get some more information on her. Bringing in some groceries, I saw Mrs. Ridley stuffing something into her trunk. I said hello from across the street, but she must not have heard me. It looked like she was pressed for time by the speed she was moving to and from her house. She brought out something that was wrapped in blankets with what looked like a hand peeking out from the top of the bundle. The frantic actions of running in and out of the house and the weird items being transported were enough in my mind to report her. Girl, why did you call the police though? Alright, let's put her age in here in 35 to 45. Um, we think she's about 5 foot, so we'll do like between 5 foot five 6. Wait, we don't know. We know she's a female for sure. We can do red hair and we don't know about her eyes. So we don't, we don't know. So how do you like, oh, there we go. Let's search for that. Margaret, all right, we got her, we got her. Right? All right. She's 41 though. All right, let's try, let's try her name. Let's go, let's snoop on her. Margaret Ridley. Search. She doesn't have an alias, so we can't get away with that. Ooh, I mean, it literally looks like she said that my little girl goes off on her own and I hate it. But then she put this weird little code here and I don't know what that means. At least she still needs mama to help her decorate and DIY her first apartment. So it looked like maybe Maybe, let's go over here and see if we can. Okay, now we got this number. Okay. 
Okay. I guess while we're doing that, let's go ahead and do this. Oh. Okay, well, I guess let me try that again. It says error. Okay, so she don't have any records. Um, oops. Oh. Okay, let's see what she been buying though. Okay, color pencils. That does not look good. That does not look good. Is somebody banging on my window? Did I have this locked already? God. Is somebody banging on my window? I mean, I know we're in detective mode, but nobody should be banging on my window. Like, I don't even have a security. Can you let me in here? I, I want to open this. Just keep all the doors open. Like, we should be cool. Right? Who's knocking on my door? Yeah, I don't know. That freaked me out. That freaked me out for sure. I know we're probably fine and safe, but... So, her little girl is going off on her own, right? And she wants help decorating her first apartment. This is plastic sheeting, zip ties, and a rubber mallet. But that might not, like, be what we think it is. Like, I honestly just feel like this one's probably not it. Like, I feel like this one's not it. Let me try this one again. Let me see if we can try this. Because we did get her Sims. Oh, I have to do something. Okay. Because this is just taking... Oh! Girl! Okay, I don't know how to do the little cracking thing. So, we'll just have to hope that it works for me. Okay. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It was that easy? Okay. Best brand coloring pencils. Graduation e-card maker free. Directions to... Simon's Grove Apartments in Rock Shore. Okay, those that seems normal. Pictures. Okay, that also seems fine. Do I need to be concerned about the disembodied hand on the dining table? No, you absolutely do not. Needed it for a drawing 201. I love you and I don't want you to move out, but at the same time, please do not forget to take that thing with you when you do, it creeps me out. Hey, did you manage to get all of M's things sorted out? Oh no, I forgot that we've got Jill's thing tomorrow. Tell her it's gonna have to wait until next week. I'll bring them up when I visit. Please remember to take the sheets and things with you up to see M. She wants to paint this coming week and still doesn't have any hammer for working on her plaster. Remind her that if she uses the claw one, she'll knock holes and stuff. Okay, so it just seems like this is just a mom. I will, I will, I promise. I'll just have her call you about the hammer, but I promise I'll help her with the painting. She's not about to do a whole place, or she's not about to do the whole place by herself. Love you. Dude, okay, so I think that's was just all like, it's fine. It is fine. We're gonna shut this on. Okay. 
Jessica um, Lieberman talking talking <laughs> talking to my dog while we walked <laughs> taking my dog for a walk I passed Jessica's garbage cans I noticed a strong odor coming from inside the boxes that smelled like a dead animal I had to pull my dog away from investigating the smell further during my struggle I saw Jessica looking down at me through the second floor window all right well you know what we're gonna do first we're gonna go see if Jessica had anything to say on her social media okay Jessica pop off sis all right Jessica the let's let's just start from the bottom hard seltzer has stabbed me in the back okay I'm finally able to get a cat. Yay! New Year's resolution is to stop saying hi to my friend's pets before I say hi to them. Okay. My internet is down and I'm in a crisis mode. How did you post that? I bent down and just realized my leggings have been on backwards the entire workout. Dude, sometimes that's the, for the best though. Most people just care only about themselves. I mean... Okay. I hardly text anyone. Can the strangers trying to chat with me on my food blog please stop? Okay. But they're like, they're on your food blog, bro. I just want to dance. The pollen this year has literally brought my back my childhood asthma. 2020 is the advent calendar of sh crappy things. All right, Jessica, let's go check and see if maybe you have, let's check your police record, like, you know? Like, let's just give it a little searchy search. Oh, Jessica, what have you done? Let's see. Um, on the above date and time, I responded, uh, um, I, the responding officer, Jacob Landsman, number 8399, arrived on scene and spoke to Michael... Scaltoni, the co-owner of Antoni's Pizzeria, Scaltoni stated a white female with dark brown hair around 5'5", who was intoxicated, had taken her food without paying and fled in a red Dakota eastbound down Jericho Turnpike, about half a mile east from Antonio's Pizzeria. The defendant, Jessica, was found in a parking lot eating... <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why this is so funny. I feel like I'm really being nosy. <laughs> <laughs> okay serious the defendant jessica was found in the parking lot eating what appeared to be the stolen property what when approached the defendant started her car and rolled down her driver's side window and asked the defendant i asked the defendant where she came from she claimed she couldn't hear me from three feet away and asked me to come closer to her vehicle i then asked the defendant if she had anything to drink tonight and she replied i might have had a few drinks why it was at this point that i asked the defendant to turn the engine off and step out of the car the defendant complied and when she exited her vehicle she stumbled and fell to the ground i asked the defendant if she needed help standing and re she replied yes upon transporting the defendant to my squad car and as the odor of alcohol on her person she had trouble walking the short distance between her vehicle and mine before she reached my squad car she collapsed i'm sorry <coughs> serious before she reached my squad car she collapsed to the ground again on her own free will and requested i carry her the rest of the way after placing her back in my vehicle i mirandized her I then asked if she would submit to a breathalyzer test, and she consented. After administrating the test, the results showed a 0 .08 BAC, which would significantly impair the defendant's driving ability. The defendant, Jessica, was transported to central booking after being charged with a DWI and public intoxication. All right, so we she's drunk, and she likes pizza. I mean... I feel like she's got her priorities straight. Why she stole the pizza, I don't know. But you know, such is life. Let's go to 30 to 35. Let's go to 5 to 5, 6. Let's go to 
between 125 and 150 pounds. She's female with brown hair, hazel eyes. All right, we found her. Got her, got her. All right. I mean, that's cool, I guess. Um, let's see. Man, if we find out that that guy, if she paid for the pizza, we're gonna, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be looking for that Antony guy. So she went to Mike and Marge's Seabreeze Cocktails and shots of house tequila. So what is... And that was on... That was in 2011 though. And this is at uh, 6-3. And I, I don't know what year we're in. So that was like... Even if it was this year, it had been months ago. So she's an alcoholic. That's all we can, can deduce from that is that she's an alcoholic. Um, let me, let's look up her phone and see if we can, maybe she accidentally killed her cat. Okay, let's, let's see if we can get into this. How to help a cat stop throwing up hairballs. How to know if your cat is sick. Why do cats bring back dead animals to their owners? Why? What to do with dead animals cats bring back? Can cats catch illnesses from animals they hunt? Okay, so maybe it just brought back a dead animal. So she got sick. She has a cat. Aww, pretty giddy. Aww. Um, hey, Rocco got a baby bunny and left it on the back porch for me to find. After I dri drive heat for 10 minutes, I threw it out in the trash, but I'm pretty sure it still reeks. Just wanted you to know so you don't go investigating when you come home tonight. Little buddy scores another kill. God, I love this guy. Thanks for the heads up. See you later, babe. Alright, so he just, her house is a, or her house, her house is a murderer. No, her, her little cat is a murderer. Fine. None of this matters. Okay, we like literally have seconds to get these done. So we're gonna go ahead and Janet Hudson is gonna get Janet Hudson. Um, she's between 45 and 50. She is, we don't know about her height or her weight. She's a female with, she looks like she's, a, oh, we do know about that. She's 5'10". 5, 5'10". Five, um, her weight's 150 pounds, so we'll just go to 150 female. She is brown and brown. Put that up. Hudson, got her ID. Um, I'm just nosy. Okay, and then we're gonna go here and Now let's read. I get the impression that my neighbor, Miss Hudson, leads a secret double life. She has young men in and out all the time. She does an incredible amount of work to look good and probably drives one of the most expensive cars in the neighborhood. Last week, there was some weird guy in a suit about her age chatting with her on the porch. They were talking about whether Mrs. Mrs. Hudson was prepared or not for the intense stuff and that next week, three men should come for the final coding. I'm not comfortable with the idea of criminal uh, criminal living next door to me. Okay, well, let's see what's going on. Let's look at her socials. 
Um, just finished shooting. Next video tomorrow at 22.30. Be ready, guys. Secret making off for the grand finale for all followers on Only Admirers. So maybe she does porn. Maybe she's a sex worker. Like, that's probably fine. Like, we don't really need to know all that. Um, worldwide wine and dine. So she's got cigarettes and some wine. That's all it that shows. Alright, let's go check out her phone search history. Hairdressers in the area, replacement cream concealer, sensitive skin glue, finishing powder for all skin tones, and rotten meat. Ew. Pictures? Oh, so they're like... Okay, I see. Oops, who's George? Ready for the big finale next week, Janet? Of course I am, George. I'm looking forward to you to looking forward to you the the men and of course the designs i was thinking about bringing christina on board she's got expertise in latex applications the fans will freak when they see what the two of you can create i've seen her stuff on social media i heard she was uh, has an only admirers account too i would love to collaborate oh janet we've been working together for almost 15 years and you never get get catty when it comes uh, we've been working together for f almost 15 years and you never get catty when it comes to other up and coming other artists. That's what I love about you. Yes, the industry is getting tougher and tougher, but I know what I'm good at and it's, it takes all kinds to bring productions like this together. True words. Well, I'll email you the sketches. Okay, so the neighbor's <laughs> Even if she was a sex worker, the neighbors should mind her business. So done. Dude, we got like an hour to do this last one. David. Dude, we took too long. No results from first thought he must have an alias. Um seven eight six two eight five oh two nine six nine five nine five eight connect oh shit Okay his phone was a little bit harder to crack. Dude we have like seconds. This guy actually might be a creep, and we, we need to know. Okay, I wonder. Um, okay, so he does have a police report. Um, I don't know if he has any aliases, but we do need to know. Got 50 to 60. Dude, we're going to run out of time for this one, for sure. Um, let's see. Hi. Is unknown, weight is unknown. We got male, gray, and green. And we're looking for this one. Okay, so we have his ID. We're gonna get rid of that. All right, the police report. A 911 call dispatcher myself, Officer Salone and Officer Adams to Mr. Garvey's house on suspicion that he was holding and torturing a neighborhood dog. We entered the suspect's home. He confessed to eating the dog and burying the remaining carcass in the garden with an old suitcase. The only reason he gave was I wanted to try everything once and wanted us to know that he had treated the animal well and gave it a quick death before eating it. The owner is going through with compensation charges charges and the county has gone through with charges of animal abuse, animal torture, and illegal slaughter of an animal for the purpose of consumption trade. Alright, well that he's already on my shit list. Petrol price US news cooking recipes for meat. What is that word? What does human meat oh pictures? Oh no, I feel like that's probably not probably not a good thing. 
I'm telling you for the la very last time, get the F out of my hunting ground or there will be consequences. Bite me. I know you had something to do with that missing woman from the hotel and I'm going to prove it to everybody. Go to hell. You cannot prove anything to anybody without evidence. I'm pissed off at last. Um, wait up, old freak. I will not rest until I put you behind bars. We'll see about that. Okay, so <laughs> Brad thinks there's definitely something going on there. Um... So he bought bullets for hunting rifles, and then he bought gas, ew, no he didn't, he bought lighters and other things, and got some cigarettes and some gas, I don't, I feel like he's gross, like, like, I, I feel feel like he's gross. Let's just hope that's good enough. Alright, well, I have another one, but I thought it stopped us. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!